What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. Jumped in the bathroom and shit, man. That shit was wild. But, you know, that's how it goes, man. You know, once you're popular and everybody know your name, man, it don't matter what's going on, man. Once people uh, know you, you know what I'm saying, anything can happen, man. So. But this was a good video, man, about what's going on. Because I heard he got into, just got into a fight, got a black guy. So we got the video, man. Y'all know how we was talking about um, T.I. son. He was on some goofy shit. Like, why is you trying to fight Julio Fulio when you knew Julio Fulio was going through so much shit? You know what I'm saying? I don't know why you thought you was going to try to fight that nigga. And it, it, bruh, come on, man. King Harris speaks about the injury to his eye while seeking medical attention. You say, bruh. Hey, say, bro, your machine stopped at six dollars, my. I couldn't even put the whole ten in, my. I couldn't put the whole ten in, bro. Hey, bro, I want those, bro. What's going on with the machine? I put six dollars in this bitch, G. Hey, listen, y'all, the machine, right? First of all, I need help with this. I don't know. How to goddamn link whatever I'm trying to link to it so when they scan, it wow. come to my shit. And another thing, I need oh, help changing the prices in damn. here. And this is not active right now. It's not accepting no money. I need I need the whole setup. So you know what I'm saying? If you you know what I'm saying around the area, uh, in the city, you know midtown type shit, come with me. I need help. It's going down over here. Damn it's going down that. over here. That's they came to help me out. Okay, that was kind of, you might have to show us that again. Yeah, I might have to see that part again. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Man, don't you get taken out. Pull up on me. How much money you got in your pocket now? Don't get taken out of my fucking How much money you got in your pocket now? No, no, nah, nah, where is it? Where is it? No, where is it? No, where is it? You what? plan to have money in your pocket for one day? Where's it? No, Where's no, the money? No, Where's the money? No, you spent it all or what no, you do? No. I, I invested. You invested. Where's the investment? Show me. Come here. Show me. OK, 
Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go. One minute, 37 seconds later. <laughs> Where are those way out flying? I was so... I said, nah, you dig it. You seen the video? I'm like, damn. Yeah. 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 yeah, video. Shout out to um hood, shout out to hood work chronicles. Y'all see what it says, man. I'm outside. Come on, shake some. Come on, shake some. Come on, shake some. Hey, get your employees. Think I ain't told my son, his mama, and his grandmamas. Is it going to prison? If you got to keep this shit up, they ain't going to prison. Ain't no way around it. Can't nobody stop it but him. You know what I mean? I've already had the conversation. I've already made my peace with it. Because I know that energy. I was that energy. You are embarrassing yourself. Family. You are embarrassing yourself. You are embarrassing yourself. You are embarrassing yourself. What is she talking about? Well, you can't do nothing with me. Ain't you can do with me. Imagine raising your son in a multi-million dollar mansion, giving him the best of everything, and then watching him grow up trying to act like he's straight out of the hood. That's exactly what's happening with TIS son, King Harris. He's out here flashing gang signs and trying to act tough. But the truth is, he's a kid who grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth. Get your in the boxing ring. Well, yeah, what are you talking about? Hey, I hear a lot of these got so much to say when it's viral, but when I tell them in that boxing ring, everybody want to be hot. King has been trying hard to distance himself from his dad's success and their comfortable lifestyle yeah. lately, probably because he wants to create his own identity. But instead of doing something constructive, he's getting into all kinds of trouble to prove he's some kind of gangster. King's antics are wild. Remember that time he allegedly threatened to pistol whip a Waffle House employee? And you still talking inside though. You still talking inside though. Why you inside? You can't stop me from doing or that other incident where he got into an argument with some random guys in an Atlanta parking lot and almost pulled a gun out of his backpack, threatening to shoot up the place. He even does dumb stuff like paying a homeless man to do a hot chip challenge yeah, without yeah. water. The same challenge that tragically led to a young kid's death. Instead of just helping the guy out, King thought it would be funny to pull a stunt like that. Different, different flavor, but it's still hot. So look, there you go, $50, five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, sh Even T.I. has spoken out about his son's behavior. He and his family have been trying to get King to calm down with all the gangster stuff, but King isn't listening. I think I ain't told my son, his mama, and his grandmamas, is it going to prison? If you got to keep this shit up, they're going to prison. Ain't no way around it. And if all his reckless behavior wasn't enough, King went on to do an interview where he pretty much denied being raised by T.I. and Tiny. He claimed he's not some privileged rich kid, even though we all saw him grow up in a gated what? community with all the comforts money could buy. King tried to paint a picture of being secretly raised at his grandma's house like in the middle of the hood. I live with my grandma. You know, we'll go to the house on like a weekend. They'll say, hey, we shooting today. We need y'all at the house. They'll come get me from my grandma's house. And right after we done, when the cameras go off, I'm right back to my grandma's house. Then there was that incident at the Atlanta Falcons house. game that's where T.I. was set to perform. T.I. and Tiny were joking around with King, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Tiny ended up spilling the truth. She said the only reason they would take King to his grandma's mm -hmm. house was because he kept crying to go over there. Not because he was left in the hood by his parents like he's been claiming. A lot of people think that when Tiny exposed him for he being a spoiled go, rich kid, King got embarrassed, go, especially since this all happened on Instagram Live. That public callout probably set him off, causing him to lash out. That public call-out probably set him off, causing him to lash out at his own parents and start talking about standing on business. What the you what the I know you. What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all doing that to me? Y'all know me. You know I stand on business. You know I stand on business. Why you even letting somebody play with me like that? Why you letting somebody play with me like that?
King's foolish behavior didn't go unnoticed, especially by the late Fulio, who had no problem calling him out. Mm. Fulio took to Instagram and wrote, I don't get why Jit wanna be gangsta, you grew up with a silver spoon. Right. That comment really set King off. Feeling insulted, the 19-year-old took to social media and fired back, challenging the Jacksonville rapper to step into the ring with him. Fulio, Fulio, get your in the box ring. Not about the in that box ring. Right, speak on. You, bro. Hey, I hear a lot of these have so much to say when it's viral, but when I tell them in that boxing ring, everybody want to be King had been posting videos of himself boxing in the gym with a trainer, probably feeling like he was the next Mike Tyson or something. So Mike Tyson, I'm mad. I've just been mad lately. I'm ready to get in there and punch somebody angry. I've been angry, and I'm waiting on one of these apples. The, the big state mouth to get in that boxing ring. But Fulio wasn't about to entertain King's antics. He clapped back on his Instagram story with a blunt warning. I barely post or troll Nomo King. Find you something productive to do before you be watching Netflix in heaven with our lord and savior. <laughs> when King picked a fight with one of the most notorious gangsters in Florida's rap scene, social media went wild. People were baffled by his decision to go after someone with Fulio's reputation. Shoddy barking up the wrong tree. Bro, your dad can't save you from this one, one person tweeted, highlighting how King was in over his head. Another warned, he's gonna put T.I. in a bad situation. King isn't from the streets. People were clearly concerned that King's tough guy act would get him into serious trouble. Someone even commented, he's gonna get himself hurt and I only hope it's caught on camera so we can hear him cry for his mommy, daddy and the police. And honestly, they weren't wrong to be worried. The streets are nothing to play with. And even a notorious figure like Fulio wasn't immune. He ended up getting shot and killed. Just hours after Fulio's death, King posted a cryptic message on his Instagram story that seemed to address what had happened. Y'all be safe out here. Many saw this as a subtle jab, almost like he was trying to prove a point. But instead of gaining respect, it only sparked more warnings. People started telling King to drop his fascination with street life because nothing good ever comes from it. One tweet summed up the sentiment perfectly. I hope King Harris realizes this ain't no damn game. Fulio checked him not too long ago. Don't make yourself a target. That's exactly why so many people are trying to warn King. He's dipping his toes into something he doesn't really understand. This is real life we're talking about, with real life gangsters, and it's not real some game. Situation. Just look at how the ongoing war between the ATK and KTA gangs in Jacksonville led to Fulio's death. That shows just how dangerous it is. Over the past few years, Fulio and his crew, Six Block KTA, have been locked in a brutal feud with their rivals, the ATK Gang, and they've been using their music to stir the pot even more. Their controversial lyrics often detail the murders of their enemies, which has given rise to a new genre in hip-hop called murder rap. To understand how it all led to this tragic moment, we need to rewind a bit. Back in 2021, one of the most talked about songs on social media was Who I Smoke by Young Gene Ace. This track brought to light one of the deadliest rap feuds going on for years in Jacksonville, Florida. The rappers from Jacksonville had a unique style of embedding clues to revenge killings in their music videos, often taking beats from classic pop songs and rapping the most sinister lyrics over them. Young Gene Ace and his crew remixed the classic Vanessa Carl song a thousand miles and flipped it filming at a luxurious golf course smoking cigars and dancing to lyrics that celebrated the deaths of their rival crew led by fulio in north jacksonville who i smoke went viral hitting 16 million views in just a month and grabbing reactions from all the major influencers online who i smoke say no <laughs> hey fulio come get this nigga. Videos I've seen. Just, you know why they ain't show one gun in the video. But the way they seem to be just nonchalantly have, like, enjoy life while clowning the niggas who died? With such a bold move from Yungi Nace, Fulio felt the need to retaliate in a way that was even darker and more ominous. Fulio remixed a classic Fantasia a song, movie. and in his music video, he printed out a large poster of two yeah. of Ace's friends and his blood brother who had died beside Ace in a drive-by shooting outside a Japanese steakhouse. Ace was the only one in the car who survived that attack. Who I Smoke came out of nowhere, went crazy, kind of made it more mainstream to where people who don't even know y'all, they were tapped into it. I, I took it too far when they made a song for a speaker. Once the dead get involved, it's already too far. Robert Johnson was last seen alive in July of last year, 
Then last Friday, a man discovered the, the victim's skeletal remains. Since then, Fulio's crew and Young Guinness's crew have released diss track after diss track aimed at each other, with hidden messages embedded in their music videos. What makes this feud even colder is that some of the folks beefing are literal cousins, blood relatives caught up on opposite sides of this violent rivalry. Yeah, no, it is okay. It's okay. It's a real cousin? Now, while Florida has always been a major player in the rap scene, Jacksonville didn't really hit the mainstream until the viral diss tracks between two crews put it on the map. On one side, we've got Young Gene Ace, the face of the ATK gang, which mainly controls the west side of Jacksonville. On the other side is Fulio, the leader of KTA, also known as Kill Them All. KTA is an alliance between Fulio's gang from the north and another crew called Young and Reckless from the south side. The beef between Young Gene Ace and Fulio kicked off around 2017 over what they both say was a misunderstanding. It's a bit unclear what exactly happened, but it quickly escalated from a simple disagreement to a full-blown war. What makes this feud even more tragic is the number of mutual friends both sides had. While Ace and Fulio were never exactly close, they shared friends like Queso. Queso, who is currently locked up with his father on charges for two murders, including the K-wording of Fulio's blood brother Bibby, played a significant role in the beef. After Bibby's murder, Queso notoriously wore Bibby jerseys and took photos like trophies. He even released an album in 2019 with images of his dead rivals on the cover, like a twisted Mount Rushmore of fallen enemies. Jacksonville Police, or JSO, are notorious for not solving cases. In fact, 70% of murders in the city go unsolved. This led to the online catchphrase, JSO loves Queso, because Queso blatantly broadcasts his actions on social media. Despite this, all of Queso's songs have millions of views on YouTube, and he was even close with King Von. Queso even appeared in that infamous video where Quando, Rondo, and King Von were joking around before their tragic fallout. <laughs> but back in Jacksonville, Queso had built quite a reputation for his ruthless behavior. One of his most infamous stunts was trying to organize a real-life teen death match with his own cousins, who were part of the rival gang KTA. What's up, where you at? Come on, I do a uh, teen death match. Right now? Yeah, I'll do words on us too. Look at my cousin. One of these cousins was Lil Nine. Just a month after their heated online exchange, Lil Nine was ambushed while leaving a gas station. He was shot 12 times by a rifle from another car, causing his vehicle to crash into a nearby tire shop. Tragically, Lil Nine was pronounced dead at the scene. While people at the tire shop were desperately trying to revive him, Lil Nine's friend, who had been with him during the attack, was frantically walking around the store filming the aftermath. Play. Lil Nine's cousin recreated the gruesome scene from the tire shop in a video. Get out! <laughs> Get out! Y'all nigga play. Y'all nigga play. Play! Y'all nigga play. 60 days later, Queso dropped a music video where he put a photo of his own deceased cousin, Lil Nine, in a microwave. <laughs> the biggest step on the biggest hey, host. The craziest part of this whole feud is that all these guys were once friends. Queso met Young Guinness in the ninth grade and they had been tight ever since. But Fulio likes to remind Queso that back in 2015, he used to hang out with them and even had the nickname Six Block Queso because of his affiliation with Fulio's gang, Six Block. Even Young Guinness admitted he was a fan of Fulio's music before their beef got out of control. But a series of unfortunate events forced everyone to pick sides quickly. It all came to a head at a block party in South Jacksonville, which was in Y&R territory. A crew led by Y&R Mookie and his right-hand man, Slugga T. Ace and his gang showed up to the party and got into an argument with Y&R's leader, Mookie. Shots were fired, and a bullet grazed Mookie. Slugga T fired back, but Ace and his crew managed to escape, leaving the situation tense and volatile. To make matters worse, Mookie was already friends with Fulio's cousin, which made it easy for Y and R and Fulio's gang to form an alliance under the name KTA, or kill them all with a shared enemy, Young Gein Ace and his crew, ATK. The situation in Jacksonville was getting worse, with the murder rate climbing year after year. In 2017, Young Guinness dropped the song Go to War, which was pretty much an open challenge to anyone opposing ATK. Not long after, Ace's home got shot up, signaling that things were about to get really intense. But the real tipping point came a few months later. One of Ace's friends went out looking for revenge after he got robbed. He knew exactly where the robber was staying. 
At Fulio's cousin's house on the west side of Jacksonville, determined to get payback, he snuck into the house by throwing a brick through the sliding door and entering from the back. He started shooting with no mask and no gloves, aiming for the robber, but instead ended up K-wording Fulio's cousin Zion and wounding a nine-year-old girl. This tragic incident marked the real beginning of the war between ATK and KTA. Zion's death was a catalyst that set off a chain of retaliations. Not long after Zion's death, his sister was shot 14 times in an attempt to prevent her from testifying in court. Miraculously, she survived. The friend of Yungin Ace who did the shooting was eventually sentenced to life in prison. But this was just the beginning of the violence. With Fulio's cousin being the first to die in this beef, KTA was looking to make a swift and powerful statement of revenge. Ace's music career was starting to gain serious traction around this time. His new song, F That, was getting millions of views on World Star in just a few days, and fans were already comparing him to NBA Youngboy. Then, just a week later, tragedy struck. Four young men were in this car when they were shot. The vehicle pulled up to their Chevy sedan, opened fire, then took off. And one is in critical condition at the hospital. It was a Tuesday in June 2018. Ace, his brother, and two friends were headed to Wasabi, a Japanese steakhouse, to celebrate his friend's 18th birthday. Everyone was in high spirits, taking photos and enjoying the evening, but they had no idea that they were being watched the whole time. Rivals had found out their location through Ace's Instagram story, where he posted photos outside the steakhouse and even recorded his friends eating inside. Their enemies waited outside, watching them, and then followed them as they left the restaurant and drove along the highway. When they reached a red light, the shooters opened fire on the passenger side of Ace's car, K wording his two best friends and his brother, and leaving Ace in critical condition. It was a quadruple shooting, and the news spread quickly. Fulio got word before anyone else and mistakenly thought Ace was dead. And the news spread quickly. Fulio got word before anyone else and mistakenly thought Ace was dead. boy lost the Fortnite match. I got a tip up, man. alert, man. Two, three pack, man. Of course, Yungi Ace managed to survive that brutal attack, but it left him devastated, losing his brother and two best friends. Despite the tragedy, the attention he was getting started to boost his career. However, the violence didn't stop. Every time Ace released a new track, his rival YNR Mookie would drop a diss track with the same title, turning the feud into a deadly musical back and forth. The situation got so intense that the Jacksonville police had to step in. They created a special unit called the Violence Reduction Strategy Team dedicated to analyzing music videos from both sides, looking for any clues. The assistant chief even mentioned in an interview that the music wasn't just for entertainment. It was real and deadly serious. In February 2019, things took another tragic turn. Fulio's little brother, Bibby, became the next target. Bibby was only 16 years old and was coming home from school just hanging out in his own neighborhood at the Hilltop Apartments on the north side of Jacksonville. He was chilling on a gazebo in the courtyard with a friend, both of them looking at their phones. Suddenly, gunfire erupted. The boys dropped their phones and ran in different directions, desperately trying to find cover. In just 15 seconds, 60 rounds were fired. Bibby was K-worded instantly. A year later, court documents were unsealed, revealing that the police had named Queso as the gunman responsible for Bibby's murder. According to the documents, Queso and his crew had been circling the complex for hours, waiting for the right moment. When they finally saw Bibby, they sprang into action, unleashing a barrage of Draco rounds. Queso allegedly walked up to Bibby, who was on the ground trying to shield himself from the gunfire, and executed him at close range before fleeing the scene in a gray Nissan. Adding insult to injury, Queso had a habit of wearing Bibby jerseys and posting photos on his Instagram, celebrating the murder as if it were some kind of trophy. This kind of behavior only fueled the hatred and violence between the rival gangs. For Fulio, losing his brother and his cousin in such a short span of time was a massive blow. Just a month after Fulio's brother was unalived, Queso found himself arrested for a completely different murder alongside his father, who was charged as an accessory after the fact. The story goes that they were avenging a diss by a rival rapper named KTA Lil Buck. Buck had dissed Queso's older brother, 
who died in a brutal ambush. Two cars had rolled up on a van full of Queso's relatives, blocking them off and spraying 100 bullets into the vehicle. This feud was beyond personal. It was a vicious cycle of revenge that seemed never-ending. The war between these crews had escalated to a point where no one was safe, no matter where they were. Shootings could happen anytime, anywhere. Now, going back to King, people can't help but notice that he's acting like he forgot who his own dad is. Let's be real. T.I. is the original gangster in this story and he's been standing on business long before King was even a thought. Back to the incident at the Atlanta Falcons game where King tried to call out his own parents. It was such a mess that T.I. had to step in and allegedly put him in a chokehold like any father trying to set his kids straight would. You embarrassing yourself and the family. You embarrassing yourself. You are embarrassing yourself. You are embarrassing yourself. Hey, what is you talking about? Well, you can't do nothing with me. Ain't you can do with me. King ended up looking foolish, and honestly, he embarrassed himself and his whole family with that stunt. The internet didn't hold back either. There are memes everywhere clowning him for acting tough when he's clearly not about that life. It's like King is living in a fantasy, trying to convince himself and everyone else that he's not a privileged kid when his reality is the complete opposite. His mom's a millionaire, his dad's a millionaire, and he grew up in a celebrity household, not the hood. This dude is living the good life, yet he's out here trying to pretend he's from the streets. It's like seeing someone raised in a mansion trying to sneak off to the projects. It just doesn't add up. And that's the thing with this new generation, especially in the age of social media. Everyone thinks they can just create an image online, and suddenly that's who they are. But King needs a reality check. If he really wants to prove he's tough, and that he got it out of the mud, he needs to step away from his parents' money and actually grind like the kids who really have it hard. Let him leave his cozy life in the VIP section at the Falcons game and go hustle on the streets, get a real job, build a career, and see what it really means to stand on business. That's what people are saying. You can't talk about being real while living off your parents fame and fortune king needs to learn that actions speak louder than words especially in the streets dang so we've been talking about more about uh tia i didn't know there's gonna be a whole um basically a documentary about the the uh julio fulio beef but i mean hey is this show what what uh king will have to expect if he really got into some beef type shit so word on the street is that things are getting super messy in T.I. and Tiny's house. Apparently, T.I. is not happy that his son, King, is expecting a baby with Shout his girlfriend. And for good reason, too. T.I. believes King's girlfriend is only after him for his money and that King doesn't know what he's getting himself into at all. In fact, things took a turn for the worse when T.I. and King allegedly got into a fight that led T.I kicking his son out of the house. However, people have been talking and they're saying all of this is T.I.'s fault because King is clearly just a kid trying hard to get his father's approval. The situation just keeps getting messier, so let's unpack this real quick. Y'all, we all thought T.I. was happily stepping into his grandpapa role as his kids have started having their own kids. I mean, Tiny's daughter, Zonique, has a daughter and T.I.'s son, Domani, recently welcomed his little bundle of joy, too. However, T.I. sounded kind of stressed out when he revealed that his other son, King, was also expecting a baby with his girlfriend. Now, we don't know much about the alleged girlfriend, but the neighborhood talk shared some photos of her featuring a baby bump. And when I say people were in the comments wildin', he is not mature enough to be having a child. And how old is she? She got to be in her late 20s, and he's like 12, lol. She just wanted a rich baby daddy, and he just the son. Y'all, people were going off about how weird this whole thing looked. Whatever it is, it's definitely not giving happy couple expecting a love child. A lot of people felt like King had an oopsie, and now he's stuck with a woman who looks at least 10 years older than him. They're saying she's only after him because of his money, and she doesn't really care about being in a relationship with King. I mean, let's be real. King is 20, but he could easily pass for 16 or 17. It definitely looks like the so-called girlfriend was calculating, but you know, we don't know her real age, so it could be anything. However, some people People also felt like King got with her on purpose and that he's trying to have a baby at his tender age because he wanted to show his daddy, T.I., what being a real daddy is like. Boy, that's one extreme way to make a point, but do we really know? If y'all have been following T.I. and Tiny's relationship, then you'll know one thing they've always appeared to struggle with is their relationship with their son. The boy is always in the news over some dumb ish, like getting caught with grass in his car, fighting publicly, or doing some other rebellious thing. For example, King made headlines after he got into an argument with a Waffle House employee because they added pickles to his meal when he didn't order pickles. King recorded the whole thing and he was just straight up being rude to the employee. He even told them to step outside and throw hands if they really wanted to take it there. Stop talking. This ain't your fucking restaurant. This ain't your fucking restaurant. 
All that over some pickles? It definitely looked like a spoiled brat making minimum wage workers' lives unbearable, so yeah. people were not feeling that at all. As if that wasn't bad enough, King got people talking again when he dangled a $50 bill in front of a homeless man just to get a video for the viral One Chip Challenge. The man was obviously feeling the heat and needed to drink water, but T.I. just kept egging him on. This a different, this a different, different flavor, but it's still hot, so look. There you go, $50, five minutes. Five minutes. He eventually lost the challenge and King gave him $20 in consolidation prizes, but it couldn't make up for the fact that King put that man's life in danger, knowing the chips had been banned after a boy lost his life trying to do the challenge. All of this caused a huge strain on his relationship with his parents, and T.I. even once threw King under the bus, saying he knew for sure that King was going to end up in prison if he continued like this. Stop hitting me and getting in my comments, telling me what to tell King, okay? I know my son. Think I ain't spoke to my son. Think I ain't told my son, his mama, and his grandmama, his going to prison. If you got to keep this up, they're going to prison. Ain't no way around it. Ain't nothing I'm going to be able to do about it. Can't nobody stop it but him. You know what I mean? I've already had a conversation. I've already made my peace with him. T.I. made that video after King and Boosie's son, Tootie, got arrested on suspicion of carrying weed and driving under the influence. The charges were eventually dropped, but people still stood on King's back and accused him of trying to act tough when he was just a spoiled rich kid. King went live to address the rumors, saying he wasn't trying to be gangster and he didn't ask to get pulled over. Anyway, the whole thing didn't really blow up, and when Boosie was asked about it, he defended his son and accepted responsibility for doing some things that might have made Tootsie get in that situation. But T.I. took a whole different route. First, he went live to put his son on blast for stirring up trouble, telling him he's going to learn from his lessons real soon. And then he made jokes about his son getting arrested during a stand-up routine. Y'all can't say it's not that deep, and T.I. was just trying to make light of the situation, but making a joke out of your 18-year-old getting arrested right after it happened is definitely a choice. So, of course, this made people dig deeper into T.I.'s relationship with his son, and what they found wasn't looking pretty mm -hmm. at all. Hey. For one, it looked like T.I. was never really present for King during his formative years. T.I. was in and out of prison right from when he and Tiny discovered they were expecting a baby. And by 2009, when King was just five years old, he was already used to life in front of cameras when his family appeared in the MTV reality show, T.I.'s Road to Redemption. However, just 45 days into the show, T.I. was shipped off to prison yet again to serve one year on weapons charges. After his release, T.I. and his family jumped right into another reality show called The Family Hustle, which premiered in 2011. For the next few years, T.I. and Tiny would jump from one cheating scandal to the other and break up many, many times in between. All of this created a very toxic environment for King to grow up in, on top of the fact that he basically had to experience puberty in front of cameras. So it made sense that King started acting out on the show. In a May 2019 episode of The Family Hustle, King, who was 14 at the time, told his parents he wanted to start a music career. But Tiny just started blasting him and she didn't stop even when King told her he was feeling pressured. Tiny just brushed him off by saying it was all part of the show business and King can be seen tearing up on screen after the interaction. Are you yelling? Because you sitting here crying. No, this is not the You won't be crying every goddamn show you get. Please tell him Let's what's go going on. Bro. It's, come on. Tight. Go on out there with him. In another episode, King asked to be homeschooled so he could focus on making more music, but his parents were completely against the idea. T.I. straight up told him that he had not put in enough work to want to drop out of school and focus on a music career. Through all this, it seemed like T.I. and Tiny were more interested in being together in their messy relationship than being parents to their children. You know how King Harris is always getting clowned for trying to act tough when he's not really about their life? Well, he finally decided to tell his side of the story a few years back. According to him, 
even though he grew up with his parents' money. He still grew up in the hood where his grandmother lived because it was his grandmother that raised him. T.I. and Tiny wanted nothing to do with him when he was a kid, and according to him, the only time he ever went to his parents' gated community mansion was when they needed him to film an episode of The Family Hustle. Yay. Once the cameras were on, they acted like one big family, but the moment they finished filming, he was shipped back to his grandma's house yeah. smack in the middle of the hood. At first, fans thought King was just making up a story to look cool, but then they started snooping around, and it looked like Ken wasn't lying after all. His sister Zonique said the same thing about Tiny and T.I.'s relationship with their kids. According to her, she wasn't always happy with them growing up because they only wanted to spend time together, not with their kids. Everything came to a head when King attended a Falcons game with his family last November, and during the game, T.I. and Tiny started recording a video talking about how King grew up rich and pampered. King tried to clap back saying he actually lived with his grandma and not in their mansion but they just kept on laughing in his face and bringing up more embarrassing things about his childhood this led to king going off on them and things got <laughs> heated to the point where ti had to put king in a headlock to control the situation uh, king, have, you, have you ever woke up with a roach on your face here no that's not the ghost all right then here go here Instagram story and said, dude be faking an image for the internet and it ain't me. I don't give a F who you are. Mother Evers can't play with me in my face. Not going for that. I'm a Boy, grown man now. I stand on business. Don't give a F who you are. If I'm a mistake, say that. Stop making the world think you F with me when you don't. At this point, anyone can see that King is sick and tired of always being under his parents' shadow, which is something that anyone who's ever been a teenager can relate to. The only difference is that 
most people don't have the kind of money and exposure that King does. Mm. However, it looks like T.I. doesn't care about any of that because he believes King needs to go out there and learn some lessons since he's so tough. According to sources, this pregnancy was the last draw for T.I. and it doesn't look like he and King are going to reconcile anytime soon. Fans have also been leaving comments like, I don't blame T.I. King has gone way too far this time. That girl and her mama just want some of T.I. and Tiny Money by any means necessary. King needs to get a job if he don't have one already. King needs to watch his mouth and actions because if you want to live by the sword, you can also get unalived by it. But do y'all think that T.I. is going to make up with King or is he just going to throw him to the wolves? Comment down below and then check out this next video. All right, back. So, basically, from all that shit, man, hey, T.I. son, King, man, hey, I'm, I'm finna let you know, man, being famous, hey, it's crazy, man, because at any moment, your your friend could be your, your biggest enemy. You know what I'm saying? A person you don't even know could be your biggest enemy. You know what I'm saying? Over the little teams. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like you really into the spotlight, but, and you be wanting to crash out, but you don't understand, nigga, niggas, Nigga, you have to do that always, nigga. Every day, nigga. People gonna try to crash out 34-7 just because you, you you giving out that energy. So, you know, you gotta be careful with this bitch, man. But we out this bitch, man. This shit was crazy. Hood, now side, crip shit. Gang. Bitch, you should know, though. He famous as hell, crip. Hey, Dad, you know what I want. Mean. We need to talk about this shit. Be legendary. You know this is instrumental. You the engineer on it, so. Hold that everywhere.